Yeah, I played in Boston for years, you know, uh, but I was always a band guy. So I always had a, you know, band with a deal, you know, a rock and roll band with a deal. I wasn't sort of, you know, a drummer for hire guy. I always found myself in bands. I went to school in Boston and always wanted to have a band, have a band. So I, I spent most of my time until I moved here doing that and kind of had run that out, basically. You know, we, we had a couple of good shots at it. Didn't work out, you know, the music business, that's how it is. So I had some friends in Nashville and I was just bored in Boston. I, I was like teaching tennis and bored. I visited a friend, my friend Angelo here, who's a great songwriter, uh, producer. And uh, I came here for about five days and, I, and, he, and he used me. I worked like three days and I'm like, well, I was just coming for a visit, that's really crazy. So it was never really on my radar, you know. Uh, and then I realized, well, I can work as a drummer? That's crazy, I don't need a whole band and the whole deal and gigs and all that. So that's what brought me here. And, uh, you know, from New England, I'd been to LA, been to New York, I had seen that, and I figured that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense at this point. So here I am, and I came here, I landed, I, I got an apartment, and two weeks later somebody called me, hey, do you want to go do a gig, a college tour for two weeks, as folk singer? Wow, that was, that was easy, you know, <laughs> it was just work. I said, sure, and, and I've been working ever since. So. I came here from uh, Memphis, Tennessee, but I came here from, uh, for college at MTSU. And while in college, uh, my professor, um, Alo Davila, was telling me that you, know, you need to be out there networking, you need to go into town. And so, you know, broke college student driving 30 miles with no money, trying to figure out how to pay for gas, and you're going, trying to sit in with different bands. And, uh, and then the first person that started hiring me was guy John Birdsong. Uh, consistently uh, to play these jazz parts and these private parties and then grew from there and so while in college was making as many connections as I could so that once I graduated I wouldn't be starting at square one trying to make these connections happen and, and so towards the latter part of uh, college to right when I graduated um, that's when I started um, being in the radar of certain artists for touring and everything so no I'm not from here I'm from upstate New York originally um, but I came for college I went to Belmont University like a lot of other people did <laughs> you know with music and so I actually started as commercial music and I wasn't well, I hope they're not wise wasn't getting a huge amount out of it like and I just I began to realize that you know to do what I want to do I don't need a degree to right. do it you know in fact to this day I don't think I've ever been in one session where they said, hey, you know what, before we get started, you got your diploma, we just want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <clears throat> so, can you tell my dad that? <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a lesson, kids. Yeah. School's <laughs> for suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> but I uh, actually changed it to finance. I have a finance degree. And I kind of joke about it. Now I know exactly how much money I'm not making. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, and actually the really great thing about college, uh, pr particularly Belmont, was uh, the networking, you know. Yeah. I'm not a really great self-promoter, but, but, uh, but what was great about it is the people I went to school with uh, at that time eventually come up and become producers and executives and, and, and the business and so those relationships, you know, uh, were valuable later on in, in my career. So, but I kind of did the opposite of what you did where I... Touring was like a later on thing. I didn't like to get to tour later on. I was like, oh, this is neat. <laughs> Travel and because <laughs> I, st I really started off just kind of doing sessions and you know just kind of local local stuff and uh, so it was like, actually a different way in the door. But so you know, I'm from Nashville and I wanted to get out of Nashville. So when I was younger, I saw Kiss when I was 12 years old and <laughs> Peter Chris and I wanted to play drums. You know. But I felt like Nashville, you know, being from here, it was, I was surrounded by country music. And so I wanted to play heavier rock. So LA was the place, you know. And so I was geared everything towards trying to go out there and did. I graduated high school. My dad wanted me to go to college. And I'm like, I'm going to LA. And it was very intimidating. This was in 82. And the whole glam rock thing was going on and, and we were like you know we wanted to be more like deep purple like really good heavy rock music not this fake glam stuff and nothing against those guys i mean they're all it's all coming back you know they sold tons of records and 
you know, they were better looking than most of the girls out there. It was a trip, man. <laughs> and, and I couldn't get into that. I couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, it was, it was very intimidating. So I came back to Nashville and realized how cool it is here, you know, and you, that you can make a living. And uh, my first road gig was with Black Oak, Arkansas, because some of the guys were here, you know, got that gig with Jim Dandy. And I was like 20 years old, out touring with, with Black Oak. You know, it, it, that was a trip, man. It was really fun, though. And, uh, you know, it's like, but I still, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I don't know if Nashville is the place to make money, but as time went by, and I just kind of, let that happen. It just it worked out, and uh, I ended up getting a gig with these guys uh, called the Legendary Shack Shakers. They had just finished a record in a cool home studio here in Nashville. There's a million of them, and guys here they know how to make records. You know, it's it's the technology is amazing. But anyway, so they asked me if I would do a gig with them, and they were doing this rockabilly two beat thing. I'm like, well, you know, it's cool, but it's not really what I do. You know, more of a heavy rock guy. And they said, well, let's just try it. I'm like, all right, we'll, we'll do it. So I went to rehearsal, and we're just kind of doing this, this kind of stuff. And I started throwing in some double bass licks. And they turned and were like, what was that? What'd you just do? I'm like, that's, that's some metal licks. That, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And they go, no, no, that, that's cool. I'm like, oh, now it's cool. <laughs> you know, we didn't throw it into this kind of thing. And yeah. You're the guys that hated what I used to do. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so that kind of led to that gig. I ended up going for three years, you know, and, cool. and we made money. You know? It's always amazing to me, too, is, is when I meet guys like this, and you always look at what other guys are doing, and there's a broad spectrum of, of work. Uh, even when you feel like you're not working, there are opportunities. You just got to kind of go for it, you know. There's some scary moments. I've had times where I didn't know what was going to pay the bills. You know, Tommy, like, I don't have kids, so I can only imagine what, what that's like. And you got to figure it out. And there's people willing to help you here, you know. It's, we're pretty lucky. Well, when I first moved here, uh, I had people telling me, nothing's going to happen for two years, so just go get a job. And, mm -hmm. And you know, it just hunker down and you know, go out and network. And I ended up somehow talking myself my way into this gig after four months. Um, I had heard somebody was looking for a drummer, and I got on the phone. By the end of the day, I had a, I had a gig playing with uh, Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers. I was like, "Wow, how to do that?" <laughs> and uh, they had never heard me play. And uh, you just talked to me from the gig. Well, <laughs> Write a book about that. <laughs> no, no, it was it, it was really it was kind of a God thing, and, and not to get spiritual, but uh, I had I had gotten the chance to hang out with Eddie Bears for two days, and just you know God bless him for awesome. putting up putting up with me for you know letting me gurn him for two days. But um, I gave him a little tape, and he loved it. He and he referred me for some live gig that I that I couldn't even do because I was out of town or something. And uh, so I was able to, to say, well, Eddie Bears has been referring me for stuff. And they're like, oh, okay, well, that's all we need to hear. And so literally my first time playing for those guys, didn't rehearse, didn't, went into their office. They had a cassette, and they said, all right, here, learn these songs. See ya. And got on a bus and was sound check, opening up for Kenny Rogers in the Minneapolis ice hockey arena. First time they'd ever heard me. I mean, it, they would have been screwed if I'd have sucked. So. Thank God. That's awesome. <laughs> the the biggest hurdle for me is myself. You gotta you gotta believe in yourself. No one else is gonna believe in you. That's well written. No one else is gonna. Uh, I mean, yeah. you may get some help from other people, but odds are you're not gonna get help. Nashville is such a myopic. Everybody is in there. We we call it uh, hamster wheels. Everybody's in their little hamster wheel. You know, working on my career. Me 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 me. And it's like everybody's doing that. Everybody's looking that way, and nobody's looking, la you know, laterally at everybody else. So it's almost like you've got to fight against that, and you've got to you got to really believe in your own abilities, and you've got to go out and sell yourself because if you don't, nobody will. And and I mean, there were guys when I moved here, there were guys that played, and I would watch them play and shake my head and scare the crap out of me. I mean, they were just like, whoa, you know. And one by one, they all quit. They all just left. So, you know, yeah. 
It's a, that's a great point, and, and I, I don't want to jump in because it's a personal experience of, you know, as a kid, and the only reason why I say this is I went to Berkeley in Boston, which when I got there as a kid, I was a kid. <laughs> I was 17 thinking I was going to be in a rock and so I got there, and my first thought was like, oh my God, everybody's better than me. I'm a dead man, you know. I mean, I don't mean better, I mean, you know, like Terry Lynn Carrington, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm finished, so my only option is what are you going to do now? Everybody's better than you, what are you gonna do? So when I got to Nashville, way, so many years later, I got, it was the same kind of feeling. Everybody's better than me, but what are you gonna do? Are you gonna just fold, or are you gonna just do your thing, and, and it's gonna be cool? So that's right there, it's the same thing. You have to sell yourself, and not, not to the point of, you know, beating people over the head. Yeah, that's a fine line too. But mm -hmm. you have to be just confident and, and do what you do, which, you know, if you're just gonna get into a personal competition, you, you may lose, you may win, it's kind of pointless. I, I always tell people, yeah. out of 100 people that move to Nashville, if you look at, oh my gosh, I'm competing against 100 people, you're gonna freak yourself out. Right. But if you figure that out of 100 people, 88 of them in the next three years are gonna go, this is insane, I'm not doing this anymore, and are gonna, gonna quit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then you're dealing with 12 people, and out of those 12 people, you know, you're dealing with probably the best of those 12 people, you know. So it's, it's, it's really not as bad as you think, but it, it takes a lot of persistence. I mean, hardly any of us have been here for less than, what, five years? Mm -hmm. I mean, <coughs> it, it, Nashville's a very long-term town. I, I remember, <laughs> just because in, it's like in your case as well, somebody kind of like took you to a session, Eddie Bears in your case, uh, and I was treated really well when I came as well, but um, I remember, so I try to, per, you know, pass that along, and so any young guys, I, they call me up, hey, can we grab a coffee? Sure, I was, you know, I absolutely love to do it, and um, I remember this one guy in particular, uh, he was just ready to go, you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take over Nashville on the drums, I'm like, man, more power to you, you know? Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I get a call about three months later from the guy, and he's like, Man, I don't get it. I should be ruling this town. <laughs> I might want to give it a few more months, you know. <laughs> it does. It takes a long time. It's completely relational. And it takes a long time to build lasting relationships. And, uh, you know, that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. There's this ability thing. And you have to, you know, I used to practice my ass off when I was younger because I wanted to be good. And then I learned licks don't necessarily get me the gig. I need to learn how to play a song. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. You know, there's that thing. And then there's the meeting the, the people. You know, do you get along? If I'm gonna be on a bus with a guy right. every day, I wanna be able to get along with them. That's it right there, man. You know, That's, and it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's I mean, so many different <clears throat> aspects to it. There's that and then, you know, and I'm sure you can attest to this from the session work scene, when you're in a session, you know, you have to check your ego at the door because, you know, you go into the session and, and, and you have to go in there with an the open mind that the producer has an idea for the song. And you are there mainly to do what they ask you to do. So if they say, I don't want that snare, well, this snare is perfect for this song. What do you mean? This is my best snare drum. It's like, no, I don't want that snare. Well, look, this is my sound. and. And if you don't like it, then you call such and such. And then, yeah, the next person comes in, and now they're in the producer's book for about 15 years, you know, because you chose mm -hmm. to make a poor decision on something. And and with that relational thing, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it takes, I think it takes a lot in, a, in an individual. First of all, you have to have some confidence, and you have to um, not be so, I guess, negative about your own playing, uh, but know that, as you were saying earlier, about your voice in, in a voice of a hundred people, um, you have your own sound, just like you have your own timbre and your own voice. So um, know that if you go to the table with what you do well, because nobody else can do that except you. There's only one Steve Gadd, there's only one Keith Carlock, there's only one Vinny. You know, uh, there's only one Dan, there's only one Kevin, and so on. So go there with this, uh, with this confidence, and people can hear the confidence in your plan. They can hear whether or not you have a question mark over your head, or if you have an exclamation point. Yeah. This is who I am. Yeah. It's very audible. Man, I read a I read a thing on Facebook the other day, and 
goes along with what you're saying. I, and I thought it was brilliant, and I wish I could remember who said it, but it, he, he said, in order to make it in the music industry, you have to be able to healthily uh, process rejection. Mm. Yes. Yeah, because, yeah. Right, man, you're going to get a healthy dose. It's going to happen. Yeah. 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 And then, in a healthy way process. That's a great point, and I, and I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, yeah, you know, not fortunate that I learned that really, really out of the gate, because you, you come out a young guy, you're pumped up, like you yeah. said, you want to rule the world. You're, you know, you're 18 years old, rock and roll or whatever you're into, you're just going to do it. There's no fear. It's almost, it's ridiculous, uh, actually. And, uh, you know, luckily for me, I learned that right out of the gate. <laughs> okay, that's off the tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now what are you going to do? And it's not just a collection of phone numbers. It's right. not just filling your phone with phone numbers. It's actually knowing people. You know, I, I met Joe that way. Uh, I, I held down a day and I was playing with the people I wanted to play with at night. Just so I could pick and choose right, who right, I right. thought was cool, regardless of what the money was, mm -hmm. it afforded me to pick stuff that I thought was really good or had potential, but, but wasn't making money. Right. But it gave me some experience that I didn't have to yeah. play with a certain kind of music uh, and not just look at it as dollars and cents all the time, but as maybe a future. Or um, that's how playing with Rodney Atkins. I mean, he was, he was a new artist that. You know, the first record didn't happen for years and years and years. So I could either bail, or my choice was to sort of stand my ground and pick the people I wanted to play with, and uh, you know, see if that happened. At least, I, at least I'll get the musical experience. Mm -hmm. I may not get a ton of money. I could afford to do that at the moment. I didn't have you know six kids or whatever, and that's a whole other consideration. But, right. You know, uh, instead of just coming out of the gate guns blazing mm -hmm. and not, you know meeting people, building relationships or whatever, not just collecting numbers. A lot of guys will collect numbers or ask me for my right. number. I'm like, well, you can have my number. I don't, I don't know what it's going to do for you, but give me a holler, you know, and instead of building relationships and knowing people because they're great people or because you play well with them.